Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brushes and Bunnies, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Winsor and Newton pigment markers. We're also going to be talking about the difference between pigment markers and dye-based ink markers. So I've been drawing every single day and been having so, so, so much fun playing around with colorful inks. And I was cleaning out some of my art supplies in my closet space and I noticed that I haven't touched markers in so, so long and I sort of missed working with them. And one of the markers that I ended up finding in my closet was actually these Windsor & Newton markers that I did receive as a Christmas gift last Christmas. So I figured I would uh, test them out, do a review, and draw some super cute kitties in the style that I've been playing around with and use this pigment marker as sort of the outline and also background work. The set that I received were the blue tones and normally in the stores you can get these sets of six markers. There's usually five colors and there is one white marker as well for blending and the markers are stored within a hard plastic case. So overall already the design is quite nice. I really like the look and feel of the marker. The way that you hold the marker it just feels really really nice in your hands. The Windsor & Newton pigment markers are definitely a nice clean high quality product from the outside. When applying the marker onto the paper, I noticed right away that it was a beautiful, highly pigmented, vibrant ink that was coming out. I had no issues. I um, really loved the smoothness of the marker on the paper. As it glided across the paper, it just worked or I, I was able to draw really well with it. Also check out that one last color that I used, that is the indigo, and it was one of my favorite colors in the overall package. It's just absolutely beautiful. The white blending marker also worked really well and I was very surprised by that. In the past I've had struggles or troubles with white blending markers, probably because I don't really know how to use it that well, however in this case it was very easy to use and there was an instance kind of um, impact when using it. I did use it on one single color, I did use it for um, adding specific details in some of the ink work that I had already put on the paper and I did use it with um, two different colors. So all three occasions worked really really well. This marker is double-sided and there is a broad tip which I like to use for background work and there is also a bullet tip. Now in the past I've preferred using brush tipped markers just because I like the, the feel and the application to the paper and also I find it easier to blend with a brush tipped marker so I don't typically use broad or bullet tip. Um, however, in this case, if I am using it primarily for outline work in my illustrations, then the bullet tip is definitely much better. Um, I can get stronger um, contrasting lines with the bullet tip and it's rather easy to use actually. Now let's get to the topic of pigment versus dye based markers. One of the key features that the Winsor & Newton pigment markers advertises on their label and also on their website is that this product is light fast and they even go as far as saying light fast for up to 100 years in normal gallery conditions. For those of you who don't know what light fast means, it essentially means that the dye or the pigment is not prone to discolor when exposed to light. So basically when you're hanging your drawing up on the wall and it is exposed to direct sunlight, if the marker is not light fast then it will tend to discolor over time as the sun keeps shining on the actual drawing. If we use Copic marker as an example, Copics do use dye unlike this Winsor & Newton pigment marker that uses pigment and in this case dyes will um, succumb to ultraviolet rays. So it will discolor over time. It is not light fast and any Copic drawing that you do have hanging up on your wall will be directly affected by the sun. There is a way around that of course. You can protect your art with certain UV blocking seals. You can use a special spray for that and cover your drawing and this should protect the drawing from the sunlight. However, the Winsor & Newton pigment markers, um, because they're using a pigment rather than a dye, then that means they are light fast. Another big difference between pigment and dye-based inks is that the pigment ink is of course a lot more opaque in nature. So when you're applying the pigment marker onto your paper, the color will be more vibrant, it will be more pigmented, it will be stronger in contrast, and you won't be able to layer as much 
as um, unlike the dye based markers. So this is a little bit of a difference. The color is a lot stronger and yeah, I mean, it's just more pigmented. Um, if we take a look at the dye based inks, these markers, of course, you can work a lot with the layers. If we take a look at like Copic markers, you can layer, you can create um, different contrasting elements within your illustration with the different types of markers or the different colors of markers. And with the pigment ink is a little bit different. You kind of have a stronger color and it's a little bit harder to layer. Something that I also look out for when working with markers is to see whether the marker is actually waterproof. I do work a lot with gouache and watercolor and in the past I have added marker in between these layers to kind of emphasize certain colors. Um, in the past I have also mostly worked with dye based inks so there was a little bit of an issue with some bleeding a little bit. The color was not that waterproof and yeah I, I would have some troubles. In this case with these markers, the pigment markers from Windsor & Newton, I did not find information on the website to see whether they were waterproof or water resistant however when using them and testing them with the watercolor as i was doodling, doodling these little uh cat illustrations i noticed that there was no issue with actual watercolor so it did not smudge it did not bleed there was nothing happening so i guess they are then waterproof or water resistant so yeah that's definitely a huge positive and again, just to compare with the dye-based inks, if you are using dye-based inks and you're using it together with another water-based product like watercolor, um, you have to make sure that your dye-inked or your dye-based ink marker um, are made with alcohol or solvent-based, and these ones will typically not run or smudge with any sort of water. If your dye-based ink is water-based, markers that have a dye solution that are not water-resistant, in this case, they will run and smudge when you're applying it with water. And that's about everything for this video. I believe that going forward, I will be working a lot more with the pigment-based markers just because I like how pigmented they are. Um, it works really well with the style and the look and feel that I'm going for with my illustrations. So yeah, I'll definitely uh, get some of those for the future. Probably try out different colors from the pigment markers from Windsor & Newton. Um, we will see. Also, as a side note, unrelated to this video, I am doing a daily drawing challenge for a year. So if you want to check out that journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. All of the links are down below in the video description. Uh, I am drawing a lot of cute animals as of late and I'm having a blast doing it. So yeah, if you want to follow me there and uh, follow the journey, then go ahead and yeah, follow. <laughs> I'm saying a lot of follows, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play Sims 4 now. I'm gonna play the new DLC. I believe it's been out for a few days now. So yeah, I'll go check that out. And I'm so excited to, yeah, play it. Island Living, I think it's called. I don't know, whatever. I'm talking smack. It's time to go. Have a great weekend and we will see each other next weekend. Bye.